Hello everyone. Can you hear me well? I hope you can hear well, but if you cannot leave time in the chat box. So welcome to the open day. Um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Yin, the training coordinator at uh, Oxford University Clinical Research Unit. We call it in abbreviation as OPRU. So uh, thank you very much for joining our webinar today, the open uh, day webinar. So this is when is it our annual event uh, where we want to introduce you what we are doing at OPRU and uh, training opportunities that may be of your interest. So um, our unit has a history of 30 years in Vietnam working on biomedical research in collaboration with the Hospital for Tropical Disease in Ho Chi Minh City and the national one in Hanoi. So we aim at um, improve um, the impact, um, positive impact to the global health, um, especially to uh, the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of the tropical disease, infectious disease in uh, Vietnam and in the regions. So in parallel with research projects, we um, has been providing training opportunities um, to young researchers in Vietnam uh, through a BD scholarship program. So shortly, you will have a chance to meet, uh, uh, to meet Dr. Lee Jones, head of training at OPRU. Uh, she will give you full information of this um, BD scholarship program. Um, for, um, for this um, event, as of the online event, uh, sometimes uh, the internet may be uh, unstable. I hope not. But if that happens, please uh, accept our apologies. So after uh, Dr. Lee Jones' presentation about um, the work at um, the BAD scholarship program, at 2.15, you will meet with scientists and um, BD students who represent their research group to uh, share with you um, their overall activities and study projects. At 3.30s, we will show you a video of our lab uh, as a, a lab to, virtual lab tour for you. At 3.40 p.m. What is the next slide? Show the next slide. Okay. So at 3.40, um, a former BAD student, Dr. Han Ting, and um, the new BAD student, Dr. Wang Zhang, will tell you their story of uh, the BAD journey and the uh, career path. Uh, at the end, we have uh, about uh, 10 minutes for question and answer, uh, and the event will finish at 4 p.m. So um, please use the chat box in case you have uh, any question and comment and um, okay so for now I hand over to Dr. Lee Jones. Thank you. So Ian has already introduced a little bit but I just wanted to confirm um, the old crew vision with you. So our vision is really important. It's to have local, regional and global impact on health by leading a locally driven research program based on infectious disease research in Southeast Asia. And we are based here in the south of Vietnam in Ho Chi Minh City, as well as the north of Vietnam in Hanoi. In the south, um, we are based at the Hosp Hospital for Tropical Diseases, which is a large referral hospital for all infectious diseases in the south of the country. The clinical laboratory building here is exclusively funded by the Vietnamese government and it is where Oak Cruz Home is and as well as the hospital laboratories. We have over 300 staff in Oak Cruz Ho Chi Minh City and as well as working very, very closely with our partners at HTD, we also collaborate with many other hospitals and universities in the south. In the north of Vietnam, in Hanoi, we are based at the same site as the National Hospital for Tropical Diseases, an 170 bedded disease hospital that treats over 4,000 patients every year. And this is under the direct supervision of the Ministry of Health. Okru Hanoi is a slightly smaller unit. It has over 30 staff members. And similar to our unit in the south, 
In the North, we also collaborate with other hospitals and institutes, and in particular with the National Institute for Hygiene and Epidemiology, or NIHI for short. As well as our sites in Vietnam, we also have two sites elsewhere in South Asia. We have a site at the Eichmann Oxford Clinical Research Unit in Jakarta, and this is hosted by the Eichmann Institute of Molecular Biology, and we are also partnered with the University of Indonesia. The main focus of EOCRU, which is our shortened name, is to work on bench to bedside research to improve health in Indonesia and in the region. Finally, we have, we have another unit in Nepal, in Kathmandu, which is hosted by Patan Hospital and the Patan Academy of Health Sciences, focusing um, the majority on enteric fever, but also expanding into other healthcare priorities of relevance to Nepal. The research we do at OCRU covers a diverse range of pathogens and a diverse range of disciplines. So everything from influenza, Emerging, emerging viral infections, including COVID-19, obviously, malaria, dengue, hepatitis, um, infections in the respiratory tract and the CNS, and also focusing on antibiotic resistance, which is a cross-cutting theme across many of our research groups. We do a number of clinical trials at OCRU, um, but we are also involved in a number of disciplines, including microbiology, epidemiology, genetics, um, and also bench-based research in biostatistics, mathematical modeling, and health economics. We also have a growing social science team and are involved in a number of public engagement projects. Finally, we also have a number of medical innovation projects going on at the hospital. Our research takes place both in the lab, in the office, in hospitals, in the community and in the field. So there's a lot of interesting work going on in lots of different departments. So moving on to the reason that you've joined us here today, and I'm delighted to see we now have 136 participants, which is great. Hopefully we have a lot of budding PhD students out there in the audience. So in order to, um, if you're interested in doing a PhD at Oak Crew, um, to let you know we have opportunities every year for talented Vietnamese students and clinicians to enrol in our program. Our program runs for four years and successful applicants will be registered with universities in the UK, but carry out work exclusively at Oak Crew Coaching and City, Oak Crew Handle I'm just going to pause briefly. I think someone has their microphone. Can I ask you to ensure that your microphones are muted at all times? Let's see if we can find. Okay, so let me have a quick look to find his microphone. Um, no one. I can't see anyone. Oh, ah. Uh, okay. Apologies for that. We found who had their microphone on and we've managed to mute now. Apologies for that. Okay, so as I said, you will be registered with a UK university. Um, any research that is done during PhD focuses on infectious diseases relevant to our hospital, Okru, and Vietnam as a whole. The fellowships are very competitive, but they are well worth the fight. They include supervision and training for four years, your university fees, as well as support for periods of overseas training once we get back into a bit more normality following COVID, and you will also be provided with a salary during these four years. At Oak Crew, we are proud to say that we've graduated over 100 PhD students since we started the programme in the year 2000. At the moment, we currently have 30 PhD students in process and you'll get to meet some of them soon. Here's some examples of some of our fun times with our students on the left here. You see one of our recent graduates who has just passed his PhD viva that was done completely remotely due to COVID. And then on the right, you see some pictures of our PhD celebration parties where we congratulate those who have successfully finished their studies and welcome the new students as they start on their PhD journey. 
During your PhD, as well as doing your research, you will also be um, supported to develop practical skills and transferable skills. So just some examples of some of the workshops we have carried out in the last year or so are such things as phylogenetics, qualitative research and biostatistics. And we also support you in developing as a scientist more generally by helping you with grant writing, project management and how to present a scientific talk. We also have monthly writing workshops to ensure that our students are developing as writers. Every year we have a student conference and the student conference is shared with our sister unit, Moru in Thailand. The importance of this conf conference is that it allows our students to network. We also have a careers workshop and we allow our students to compete in a three minute thesis competition. And you can see some photographs of these events here. So how do you apply to become a PhD student at Oak Crew? Well, in order to be eligible for application, you must have a high level degree in a related subject, whether this is a Bachelor of Science, a Master or an MD, a Medical Doctorate. You must have an English score of IELTS 7 or above or equivalent. We can make exemptions for people who have completed their master's studies overseas in an English speaking country. In order to apply, we will advertise predetermined projects through the University of Oxford's website around September this year. And these are on the Nuffield Department of Medicine section of the Oxford website. The application deadline is January 2022. Interviews take place in February 2022. And the earliest project start date is April, although you may be able to defer to October if there's any specific reason. During this project, you will be registered at either Oxford or Open University in the UK. And as I mentioned, this is four years full time. There are part time options which we can discuss. Your salary and research costs will be covered. And if you have any further questions, you can contact either myself or Miss Ian at this address, which is training at oakcrew.org. But what if you have an amazing idea for your own project and you don't want to apply to a project that's being advertised? Well, there are possibilities for this. If you have a really amazing idea, you may wish to identify a potential Oak Crew supervisor by looking at our website. You can contact them directly or you can email through our training team at the training at oakcrew.org address. You, would, you should prepare a short project proposal, remembering of course that all of our research is focused on improving human health in Southeast Asia and principally within Vietnam. You should have clear aims and objectives and consider what the outcomes of your research will be. And don't forget to clarify what gap in knowledge you are trying to fill. It is important that you provide an up-to-date CV. This should include your qualifications and job history, your research experience, any transferable skills you already have, and do not forget to include a cover letter. Do note that if you, if you decide to inform us of your own project, if you wish to be considered for a fully funded Oak Crew studentship, this project will still need to go through a competitive recruitment process, which will mean being advertised on the Oxford website. So what are our PhD students doing now? So we have a lot of pictures here of some of our recent and less recent graduates. A number of our students have continued with Oak Crew to become postdocs and even um, group heads, but many others have decided to move in a different direction and have joined industry. They're involved in clinical research elsewhere, perhaps as lecturers at local universities or moving into clinical research organizations. Some of the people you see on this page, we have a lot of group heads here, um, and even the, the head of our hospital at HTD is a former PhD graduate of Oak Crew. So I'm going to stop there and thank you all for your attention. This is just a nice photo from our student conference a couple of years ago before COVID. We have a lot of our students here from across the region as we enjoyed a lovely dinner on one of the rooftops in Ho Chi Minh City. 
I am going to pause very briefly in case anyone has any immediate question and answer. Um, let me just have a quick look at the chat box. Um, someone asked if, if they mind if I film the talk. Well, there's actually no need to film the talk. We're recording this session and we will be sharing the video later with you as well as the slide set. So there is no need to film this talk. Someone has asked, does ILTS 7 require overall or each band? It requires overall. Um, it depends on which university we are reg registering you at. I believe Oxford is a minimum of 6.5 in. Can you confirm each band in the ILTS? Yes, it's not this, um, Yes, sorry, just to confirm, yes, that's an overall band of seven and individually in each component over 6.5. Okay, thank you for your question, Dang. All right, you will have more time to ask questions later. And sorry, someone else, ILTS 7 are equivalent. There are also other methods of carrying out English language tests. So you just need to inform us which English language test you took. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of some of the other English language tests. Normally it's ILTS, but sometimes others may be accepted. If you have any exact questions about other English language tests that you have sat, you can send us an email and we can check that out for you. Okay. All right. I will stop there if there are no other questions. Let me just pause briefly in case anyone has a question to ask. Okay, I think we might have another one popping up in the chat box. May I ask which criteria to be accepted at certain universities? Um, as I said, the general criteria is that you must have a good quality master's degree or bachelor's may be considered depending um, but it should be a high-end master's degree or bachelor's or a medical doctor qualification um, and then you will be invited for interview depending on the other applicants okay i think i need to keep an eye on the time so we need to move on um, any other questions in the chat box, Miss Ian will deal with those for you for the moment. So I am going to move on to the next section where we are going to meet our research groups. And I would like to stop screen sharing here. The first research group we're going to meet is our team at Oak Crew Hanoi. So I'm going to stop sharing for now. Sonia, are you online? Yes, I am. I will share my screen too. Thank really you. great to see so many people online today. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can, Sonia. Great. Oh, sorry, I've started right in the middle of it somewhere. Okay, back to the beginning. Okay. So this is the team in Oku Hanoi celebrating winning the tug of war against the National Hospital for Tropical Diseases. There are about 40 people in the Hanoi unit. Our main areas of work are um, influenza and emerging infections, serosurveillance and antibiotic resistance. Uh, the Hanoi unit was started in 2007 through an interest in influenza and the establishment of a cohort in Hanam. Um, Hanam's not far from Hanoi, it's shown by the red dot here. Um, and in particular, one commune in this province, Tangha Commune, we've enrolled 270 households and have been following them up regularly, collecting blood samples to look at the natural history of influenza in this community, household transmission, and also the effect of vaccination. And if COVID happens in this community, we'll also be able to look at, at the exposure to, to COVID-19. Um, the Hanoi unit is also leading a national serosurveillance network, which includes 20 provincial and national hospitals, 
we collect leftover blood samples from these hospitals and keep them in big freezers. And we can use those um, to test for immunity against uh, common vaccine preventable diseases like measles and tetanus, but also emerging infections like COVID-19 so that we can look at population um, immunity and trends over time. For antibiotic resistance, we're also doing surveillance, um, also stewardship and population-based interventions. So our surveillance work is led by a, a reference lab that we've, we've worked with national partners to establish in Hanoi and a network of 16 hospitals who again send samples to our national lab in Hanoi and we test them for resistance levels, which allows us to track over time what, what resistance is like in Vietnam. And then building on from this, there's the ACORN project, which links surveillance in several countries in the region, in Laos, Cambodia and Indonesia, and collects additional information about patients so that doctors can also use this for making patient-based decisions and not just for monitoring trends over time. Uh, then we have the stewardship projects. We're looking at uh, feasibility and impact of antimicrobial stewardship um, in several provincial and district hospitals, Viet Jet, Dong Tap and Nam Ding. And we're looking to see uh, in trends over time uh, in use of second um, or last resort antibiotics like meropenem and hoping that we'll be able to see reductions in the use of those. And alongside this, we also have economic evaluations um, to see under what circumstances stewardship programs would be cost effective in Vietnam. And then finally, we have our population-based interventions, mainly in Nam Ninh province. We're doing a trial of rapid diagnostic tests in commune health centers to try and improve antibiotic prescribing. We're doing lots of social science with different groups, um, including a development of a, a video game that we're targeting secondary students with. And I'll send the link for that. You can have a play with it if you like later. And finally, a trial of community-based interventions in rural communities with farmers and community members to improve the way antibiotics are used. We have five PhD students in Hanoi, all working on antibiotic resistance. Vic is looking at the microbiome. Nam is looking at antibiotic use in pharmacies. Zhao is looking at antibiotic use in farming. Ian is looking at antibiotic use in the community. And Du is looking at antimicrobial stewardship in hospitals. So I'm going to hand it over to Nam now. This is a snapshot from his PhD research looking at um, rapid testing in pharmacy settings. Nam, take it away. Thank you, uh, Sonia, for your introductions. So my name is Nam and uh, I'm the PhD student in Opro Hanoi under the supervision of Sonia. I warned uh, the uh, Opro PhD studentship in the 2019 with the open track. So I have uh, implemented my PhD project for two years, and my PhD projects focus on the antibiotic access and use in community and the feasibility to implement pharmacy targeted interventions. And more sp specifically, is focus on uh, the acceptability and the feasibility to perform and use uh, the CRP part of the test uh, to uh, ensure the rational use of antibiotics in community pharmacies. So basically, uh, my PhD projects uh, uh, consists of many components, but there is a lot of science there as health economics, epidemiology, uh, pharmacy practice, and uh, uh, social science. And uh, I train a lot of skills through the process. And working uh, in the PhD uh, program in Hanoi, Hanoi and in Okru, you also have the chance to collaborate with many people. You learn about project management, you learn about negotiations, and you learn about teamwork a lot. So I think that like uh, it is very lucky for me to be a part of the family. And I hope that some of you uh, in this meeting will feel interest and join our team in Hanoi. Thank you very much. And I think that it's time to introduce a very interesting group, the Emerging Infections Rightly, Thank you. Please drop your question with any language that you feel comfortable in the chat box and we will respond later. Thank you so much, Nan, and thank you, Sonia. Um, wonderful introduction from Hanoi there. And you are quite right, Nam. The next research group we have are the Emerging Infections Group. And I would like to double check if Dr. Hung is online. Uh, hello. I'm hello. here. Hello. 
Would you like to share your screen or would you like me to share the slides for you? Um, yeah, I will, share, I will share my screen, okay. Lovely, thank you. Are you okay, Dr. Hong? Or would oh, you like to share so, for you? So could you could you please yeah, share my uh, share my uh, slides? Sure thing. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay, so on behalf of uh, my group, uh, I will present briefly summary of my group uh, work currently at Okro. Uh, as you know that my group have um, a name of emerging infection groups. So as our, as, um, our job is um, develop and sustain a multidisciplinary research to improve the diagnostic and management of uh, patients with uh, very severe infection and especially uh, very emerging infections uh, today, and to leverage the existing cap capacity of uh, to attract uh, uh, the unprecedented emerging infection uh, challenges. So, so um, the most important work uh, currently um, occurred in our work today is uh, diagnose the diagnose and, um, and uh, support for the research as well as our own research of um, uh, the uh, fighting with COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and we have um, started the, the ISARIC protocol, uh, which is a very big um, research about uh, COVID-19 in Vietnam. Uh, we look at the clinical uh, characterization uh, videology, immuno immunological responses, as well as the, um, we develop rapid diagnostic methods and wearable devices. So our output for the uh, ISRIC protocol here, uh, up to now we have uh, more than over 10 papers over the last 12 months. And currently we have also um, still process and develop uh, more than um, project, more than uh, non-COVID-19 projects. Uh, the first one is um, CNS infection in adults and children. So we focus on um, the clinical metagenomic application. So we develop um, the diagnostic um, capacity of MNGS uh, in uh, like, diagnose the inf infections in, in children as well as in adults. And especially we focus more deeply on CNS infection and, and uh, more detail we uh, find out the um, um, viral, viral causes of CNS infection and especially encephalitis. So beside that, we also focus on um, find out more pathogen as well as we want to discover the biomarkers to have a more quickly uh, diagnose of those CNS infection diseases. And other, otherwise, we also um, discover the pathogens in animal samples. Uh, so we have uh, several uh, projects relating to rats uh, and bats um, pathogens in Mekong Delta as well as in the north of Vietnam. So. Um, about the uh, evolution and AMR profiles, uh, we, well, we have a very uh, big um, research focused on streptococcus pneumonia strains at HGD uh, in seven months. So, next please. Okay, so, um, that's one. Um, that one my of my uh, pick, um, like um, um, aspect of my group. But the the other one uh, aspect of my research group is the innovation in medicine. So we established uh, an ICU registry 
uh, across five ICUs in Vietnam with uh, HDD, NSGD, Dong Tap, Trung Vương, and U UMC. Um, so uh, we try to uh, build up a supply ergometer, a bike for using the SSI rehabilitation. And um, we also work in collaboration with the University of Melbourne and Eastern University of Vietnam. Uh, beside that uh, project, we also have a project uh, focused on electrocardiogram and photo uh, signal analysis to predict the severe diseases in tetanus and sepsis. And, and this uh, research still process in HDD. And uh, final, finally, we have a pilot study of bioimpedance to assess fluid status um, in patients with uh, dengue or dengue shock syndrome. So, so that's um, that all of my uh, work, uh, my group work uh, currently occurred at uh, Okru Vietnam as well as Okru Hanoi. And, um, and uh, for me, I, uh, second, I'm a second uh, year PhD student and my project uh, work, work on the MNGS in uh, diagnosis of um, CNS infection. So yeah, so I hope that you guys uh, found the um, uh, interest uh, information as well as you guys um, found your, your joy and your happiness to uh, maybe become a part of the Okru family in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hung. Thank you so much for your time. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to move on to our next research group, which is CNS and HIV. Chào tất cả các bạn. Mình là tôi là Vân Anh. Mình là trợ lý nghiên cứu của nhóm CNS HIV. Hôm nay mình giới thiệu các bạn sơ nét về cái nhóm CNS HIV. Nhóm CNS HIV có hai nhóm nghiên cứu chính. Có hai hướng nghiên cứu chính đó là À, chúng tôi làm nghiên cứu uh, lâm sàng thử nghiệm lâm sàng thì trong cái nhóm đối tượng nghiên cứu lâm sàng của chúng tôi thì chúng tôi chủ yếu là tập trung vô uh, cái loại nấm vi nấm là ripturocus nêu phục man gây cho bệnh uh, viêm màng não nấm ở bệnh nhân hiv và cái bệnh uh, cái bệnh này có cái cả tỷ lệ tử vong khá là cao là 40% mươi phần trăm thì uh, đối với uh, nhóm chúng tôi chúng tôi muốn tìm ra một phát đồ thích hợp tốt nhất để giảm cái tỷ lệ tử vong của bệnh nhân xuống càng thấp thì càng tốt và bên cạnh đó thì là chúng tôi cũng có làm nghiên cứu về nấm uh, Tauromyces nephii nấm này là gây bệnh nhiễm trùng máu ở bệnh nhân HIV luôn và cũng như là nhóm uh, làm nghiên cứu về Ritocococcus thì chúng tôi cũng muốn tìm ra một phát độ tốt nhất cho bệnh nhân để giảm tỷ lệ tử vong của bệnh nhân xuống bên cạnh đó thì chúng tôi làm về uh, nghiên cứu về virus viêm gan CVC cái như các bạn đã biết thì viêm gan CVC hiện tại cái số bệnh nhân càng ngày càng tăng lên và cái uh, cái khả năng nó sẽ chuyển biến thành ung thư gan cũng khá là cao nên uh, cái phát đồ điều trị thì dài hạn và tốn kém chưa kể đến những tác dụng phụ của thuốc nữa thì chúng tôi làm những cái nghiên cứu để cho thấy được tìm ra được cái phát đồ mà có kinh phí thấp nhất cũng như tác dụng phụ thấp nhất và thời gian điều trị thấp nhất để cho bệnh nhân thì uh, cái nghiên cứu đối với nấm taromyces thì chúng tôi hợp tác với đại học đức của bên mỹ còn về việc uh, nghiên cứu viêm gan cvc thì chúng tôi hợp tác với một trường đại học uh, của bên anh Um, đây là những cái nghiên cứu mà chúng tôi đã thực hiện nghiên cứu lâm sàng chúng tôi đã thực hiện trên ba đối tượng trên thì trong tất cả các nghiên cứu này thì có nghiên cứu công bố xem là chúng tôi thực hiện ở sáu nước gồm có Việt Nam Lào Campuchia Thái Lan và Indo à, Indonesia Uganda Malawi và chúng tôi cái cỡ mẫu chúng tôi thu được trên là tám trăm bệnh nhân ngoài ra chúng tôi còn có hướng nghiên cứu về nghiên cứu cơ bản thì uh, trong nghiên cứu cơ bản ngoài ba đối tượng trên thì chúng tôi có một cái đối tượng nữa đó là nấm Aspergillus. Aspergillus thì thường có ngoài trong không khí và gây ra cái bệnh viêm phổi và thường hay chẩn đoán nhầm là bệnh viêm phổi do lao và tác hại của nấm Aspergillus rất là lớn. Hiện tại chúng tôi kết hợp với lại đại học Sydney để nghiên cứu coi cái tác nhân này ở ngoài môi trường hoạt động như thế nào và cái khả năng kháng nấm của kháng các thuốc kháng nấm của nó như thế nào và chúng tôi thấy rằng cái khả năng kháng thuốc kháng nấm của nấm này phát hiện là khả năng nó càng ngày càng cao thì chúng tôi đang hiện tại mới khảo sát ở môi trường chưa làm trên bệnh nhân và hướng tương lai có thể tụi tôi sẽ làm trên bệnh nhân còn đây là những cái kỹ thuật mà tụi tôi sử dụng trong phòng lab 
để nghiên cứu về độc lực của các tác nhân gây bệnh cũng như là nghiên cứu về tính kháng thuốc và các uh, nghiên cứu về cái cái gọi là cái gì ta cái tác nhân nó từ đâu ra thì uh, chúng tôi uh, sử dụng kể cả thực hiện ở trong in vitro và in vivo trong in vivo thì chúng tôi sử dụng con uh, uh, con sâu là Galeria melonella để làm uh, động vật thí nghiệm uh, nhóm tôi có những bài báo public trên uh, những trang những trang bài báo như là blog one Uh, medical, medicine medical và cả trên Nature Nhóm CNS là một nhóm uh, ngoại trừ là một môi trường lý tưởng cho mấy bạn uh, có đam mê về làm nấm ra thì tụi tôi cũng là một cái môi trường rất là thích hợp cho những đồng nghiệp rất là vui vẻ và có những cái gắn bó lâu dài uh, Xin hết, cảm ơn các bạn Hello everyone, my name is Jam. Uh, I'm currently a postdoc in, TB, in tuberculosis group or TB group. Um, well, uh, tuberculosis or TB is a quite a long, uh, uh, old, uh, old disease. Uh, it caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis that uh, was investigated almost 100 years ago. and. Uh, Even though there are a lot of achievements in the treatment or the diagnosis of the disease, but uh, TB now still remains a uh, challenge for the healthcare system in the world uh, because of the emerging of uh, multi drug resistance and the co infections of uh, TB and HIV. And in Vietnam, every year uh, among 100,000 people, there are almost 150 people who uh, get uh, TB and uh, almost 20,000 dead every year with the rock resistance about 4%. So in uh, order to contributing to reducing the burden of the disease, our uh, uh, group uh, focus on the clinical research and also laboratory research. Um, we, uh, the center of our research is the randomized clinical trials We conduct the clinical trial to find the better uh, regimen, better drugs, or uh, also the host directed the mortality, and uh, uh, and also have to increase the survival of the patient. And um, from this clinical trial, we collect the we we collect the, um, some clinical data, and from that we can build some. Uh, some pronostic model. Uh, from this model, we can uh, predict whether the patients um, will be survive or will be survival or uh, how how is how is their uh, outcome of infection so so that we can have the intervention when necessary. And uh, from this uh, trial, we also collected the sample clinical sample. So we can study about the drug resistance or the tolerance of the um, clinical uh, bacteria uh, to understand how it influences to the outcome of treatment. And also we, um, uh, in addition to some tests for mycobacterium tuberculosis, we also develop some, uh, some uh, diagnostic tests that uh, based on the molecular technique. For example, in our group now, we, uh, we develop a test to uh, detect the expressions of uh, three genes in the host to see whether uh, how, how the expressions of this gene, uh, how, uh, whether it can predict, it can uh, let us know whether the, this person get TB or not. And in our group, we also study about the interaction between the host and the bacteria by using the infection model with the cell lines. And we also study about the system bio biology. In that kind of study, we uh, integrate some omics study like genomics, uh, transcriptomics, and proteomics. We try to understand how the, um, the genetic variants influence to the transcription and then translation 
and how it influenced to the susceptibility of the disease and uh, also the, of the infection. So now I'm only from my to introduce her PhD projects. Um, it's so great to see everyone online. So hello to you all. Um, I'm an Australian paediatrician who's been given this wonderful opportunity to work at OCRU and, and work on one, on one of my many passions, which is TB meningitis in children. And this is a seven-year-old girl who has been diagnosed with TB meningitis. And you'll see here that um, she has suffered one of the many complications of TB meningitis. You'll see that she has an asymmetry of her face in her smile. She cannot open her right hand and she needs assistance when she walks. So 30% of children with TB meningitis die, but she's one of the fortunate ones who survive. However, she's one of the 70% of children who go on to develop some kind of disability. And that's why it's so important that we do research in TB meningitis, because at the moment, even with the current diagnostics and the best treatment we have, prognosis from TB meningitis is still very poor. And so that's where the research focus has been in TB meningitis in children. The research foci ranges from finding new diagnostics to better detect TB meningitis or better drug delivery to the site of infection being the brain and even to better understanding the host inflammatory response that John was talking about. And at the moment in the world, there are two, only two clinical trials that are currently active in TB meningitis in children. And one of them called the SHORE trial is actually the largest ever trial in children um, studying TB meningitis. And it's very fortunate here that at OCRU, we are one of the key collaborators in this internationally led trial. It's a phase three randomized control trial, which compares a new drug regimen being six months of intensified drugs and aspirin versus placebo. And at the moment we have two sites that are active, one in Ho Chi Minh City at Phat Nhok Thak Hospital and the other in Hanoi at National Lung Hospital. So it's in with these, within this clinical trial that my PhD project is nested within. And their overall aims are very similar, which is to improve diagnosis and outcomes of TB meningitis in children. My first chapter of my PhD project will be better discovering new diagnostics, in particular, evaluating this new point of care test, which is simple, cheap, and easy to use called the Fuji Lam in the cerebral spinal fluid of children with TB meningitis. And the main question I have there is, can this test be used by clinicians in the real world by the bedside. And the second chapter will be better understanding about the host inflammatory interaction that John was talking about. And by that, I'll be measuring metabolomic profile in the cerebral spinal fluid of children with TB meningitis and link that very closely with detailed data from neuroimaging of the brain of these children performed at baseline when they're diagnosed with TB meningitis, but also later on at six months into treatment. And the final chapter really looks into one of the important complications of TB meningitis in children called raised intracranial pressure, of which 70% of children with TB meningitis have. One of the difficulties about this is that it's very difficult to detect in low middle income countries such as Vietnam, where the gold standard such as surgery and expertise is not available. So what I'll be testing is this new device, which is a handheld device called the pupillometer and testing whether it could be used in our children with TB meningitis to detect raised intracranial pressure. And it's something that's been used before routinely in the clinical setting in ICUs in America and Europe, but mainly in patients who have traumatic brain injury. So it's really exciting that we're testing this first time in this cohort with this disease. And I'd just like to end by saying one of the great things about doing a PhD project with OCRU is it really does expand your skill set. With all of these four chapters, I'm able to collaborate with many international partners overseas and open up future do open up doors for future research. So that's it. Um, back to you, Lee. Thank you very much for that, Julie. If you could stop sharing your screen, that would be wonderful. Thank you for that introduction to TB. And I'm just going to go back to the main deck here. 
and move on to, oops, sorry, malaria. So I'd just like to introduce the malaria team. Hello everyone. Uh, today on behalf of Malaria, uh, I would like to introduce uh, briefly about our group. Uh, there are 21 people in total, uh, including uh, doctors, nurses, uh, lab technicians, and research assistants, and my group has uh, Dr. Huang Zhao. Uh, what we do uh, for clinical trial with the target malaria elimination in 2025, we focus on uh, dealing with uh, the drug resistance in uh, last model festival room uh, by missing some uh, available anti malaria drugs uh, together as well as uh, cooperate, cooperating with a uh, pharmaceutical company uh, to take new drugs. Uh, secondly, uh, we uh, focus on improving the radical care, care of the uh, last model virus. Because uh, last modern virus infection uh, from hypnosoid deliver, which can cause relapsing uh, after treatment. Uh, finally, we uh, uh, investigate uh, the community engagement approach uh, to reduce the risk of uh, spreading uh, the drug resistance in the malaria uh, endemic areas. Uh, for laboratory research, uh, we uh, focus uh, on uh, detecting molecular markers re related to um, drug resistance, uh, such as K13, BF, MDR1, lab medicine, uh, detect low parasite density uh, by uh, real time BCR, and um, perform parasite genotyping uh, to compare uh, genotype in case of the recurrence of infection. Uh, besides, we also evaluate the susceptibility of parasites to anti-malarial drugs uh, by some assays, uh, including green state survival assay, pivotal survival assay, and in vitro myotech. Where we work, um, we have some field sites, uh, including uh, Kromba, Phu Thang, Bu Yam Mak, Nak Er, Phu Long uh, to uh, recruit patient and collect sample. And then um, uh, the sample are transferred to Opro to uh, store and uh, do some experiment. Uh, if you, uh, that's on uh, my, uh, that's on for my presentation. If you uh, uh, would like to know more information about malaria, uh, you can contact us. Contact us via uh, email malaria at opro.org or come to uh, room YOJ in Opro. Thank you for listening. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nguyen. I'm a clinician and a postdoc uh, scientist of Dengue Group. So today is my pleasure to uh, give you a brief introdu introduction about our group. And then um, our PhD student, Mr. Nyat will give you a specific introduction about his uh, PhD project. So um, here's the very nice picture of um, everyone in the group and friends in um, tech from the form of uh, uh, HDD. Uh, so Dengue, Dengue Group is uh, one of the rich, big research group of the group, uh, established in uh, 1995. That means just four years after uh, Okro uh, officially established in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, and uh, through our clinical research here, in collaboration with uh, the Hospital for Tropical Diseases in Ho Chi Minh City and uh, in Vietnam and uh, other hospital in Vietnam, we uh, contributed a lot of uh, important knowledge to improve clinical diagnosis, um, uh, management, uh, and prognosis of dengue. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, why we focus on uh, dengue? Um, the, the disease, dengue is um, the most common arbovirus disease in humans globally. Uh, and 
This disease was is transmitted between humans through the bite of the Aedes mosquito. Um, and it is estimated that um, approximately 50% of the world population living in the high-risk area of dengue virus transmission. Uh, however, until now, there was there is no specific treatment for this disease. Um, Denvasia is the first vaccine for dengue, uh, which uh, has already been um, licensed by the FDA of the US. However, this vaccine could not effectively protect all of the four uh, types of dengue virus, and it can cause um, a high risk of uh, severe disease the, uh, progress in um, children under nine years old or the people who never got dengue before. Uh, so what we are focusing on, um, so because uh, of the importance of dengue in human, we continuously uh, focus on the characterizing the clinical uh, evolution of disease and improve the diagnosis and the management of this disease. Uh, we also apply the innovation technology. For example, we use uh, some uh, non-invasion non uh, device and machine, uh, such as NICAST monitor or uh, ultrasound machine to improve the uh, close monitoring um, dengue patient in both um, intensive care unit and general world in hospital to improve our uh, clin clinical management for the patient. Uh, the pathogenesis um, uh, leading to the severe progress in many uh, population groups uh, remain unknown. Uh, so we would like to focus on this field to uh, improve our knowledge. Uh, and uh, um, especially we focus on um, the underlying mechanism of uh, severe disease in uh, pregnant women, the obesity people and the elderly people. We also uh, collaborate with the, um, with the health economic group to uh, um, evaluate the impact of disease on the population in terms of uh, the economy. And uh, because this disease transmitted by uh, the mosquito bite, so uh, clinical in entomology is one of our interests, especially when we um, work on, on the WABA care, uh, this um, uh, compulsory um, intracellular symbiont. Um, this uh, could be detected in uh, approximately 60% to 70% of insect in the nature, and it could uh, help the insect to uh, resist with the uh, some with some um, pathogen, for example, dengue and malaria. Um, and uh, we also focus on the virus evolution to see um, whether virus could evolve or how it evolved under the pressure of uh, uh, uh So here is the picture of very of many people who already um, get the um, PhD training with dengue group um, in Oak Group, and now we have in total six PhD who um, uh, work uh, in uh, various projects. Um, so, in, so I hope that in the future, uh, there will be um, many people interested uh, in working with Dengue Group. So thank you. Now I will hand out to uh, Ms. Danyak to introduce his PhD uh, project. Hi, everyone. I'm, just, I'm a PhD student at Oakrow in King College, London. It's my pleasure to be here to present my uh, PhD project title application of a, uh, artificial intelligence in analysis of ultrasound imaging in intensive care unit. So ultrasound is a widely used imaging modality for diagnosis management of patients, including cardiac ultrasound, lung, abdominal, etc. But the use of ultrasound requires specialist training and uh, 
And the measurement and quantification of this it really depends on the experience of the doctor. So in this uh, project, I, I have two aims, two main aims. The first aim is deploying uh, AI in, in uh, quantification of clinical parameters from uh, ultrasound image, uh, including cardiac, lung, and motion. And secondly, I want uh, to uh, develop the real-time AI-assisted uh, ultrasound system to assist doctor to carry out ultrasound in the intensive care unit. So this is an example of ejection fraction with the parameter so how well your heart is functioning. So in this, I deploy the deep learning model called uh, Econet Dynamic. So I have shared the model with 10,000, more than 10,000 uh, ultrasound videos and the model, what the model does is that it will automatically estimate the ejection fraction for you, the doctor. And after change the model, so uh, I got uh, the result here. So the, this is the value estimate by the model compared with the uh, values manually measured by the doctors. So if you are interested in uh, doing a PhD and then give these, Come and show us in Dengue Group. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Zoonosis Group, I would like to share with you a few uh, slides to uh, let you know what we are doing and um, is there any um, research topic in Bromau Group that could uh, meet your um, um, expectation so that you can join our group uh, as a PhD student in the near future. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you about our group. So the Zoonosis group, um, we include, uh, as you can see from the slide, a lot of people with a, a different uh, major and background, including um, biologists and also uh, our vet, and also um, some of the uh, biotechnology uh, graduate. So we are um, working on the zoonosis diseases. As you can see, um, there are lots of diseases can uh, or could be transmitted from uh, and between animals and human. So we're working uh, major majority on, on those topics. As you can see from the one, we having um, a few uh, pathogens that we list here. For example, Streptococcus, and also strep pneumonia is uh, the two uh, pathogen that we're working on. Uh, another big uh, uh, topic that our group also focus on is the antimicrobial resistance in both humans and animals. Um, we're looking at the uh, impact of agriculture, especially animal farming um, in, in, into the uh, dissemination of uh, antimicrobial resistance determinants. Um, so uh, in the next few, um, you can see um, a few um, projects that are currently running uh, and recruiting uh, participants in our group. For example, the VPAC project, that is the uh, study that looking at the impact of um, any more uh, farming, especially chicken farming without using um, or limiting uh, the usage of antibiotic. Then the next uh, project that we're working on is the cocoon project, standing for the long-term uh, colonization of colistin resistant organism in the community. And then uh, next to that, we're also looking at the carriage of strep pneumonia in uh, children um, um, before and after vaccination um, to look at the diversity of different uh, strep pneumonia um, in the community. So with this, um, I would like to uh, briefly, on behalf of um, Ms. Nyung, uh, show you one of the typical uh, PhD project um, in our group. So Nyung uh, did uh, um, doing her um, PhD project on the transmission and dynamics of antimicrobial resistance in small holder chicken flock in Vietnam with the aim to investigate the relevance of uh, antimicrobial resistance in chicken flock and then also to identify the impact of 
antimicrobial usage on the uh, prevalent uh, both phenotype, phenotype uh, and then a genotype of resistance. For that, she performed the um, uh, broad um, inhibitor dilution, for example, the MIC as we normally know, and then perform the multiplex PCR for the presence of different antimicrobial resistant gene. So in her study, um, we recruiting the chicken farms with different cycle per farm, and then we follow the chicken, and then um, we help collecting this, the, the data from different time points. Another uh, project that I would like to uh, highlight here is uh, another um, potential um, master or the MPhil project. I'll uh, see um, uh, uh, which will uh, potentially be performed by um, one of our students by Minty, and she now still a bachelor student in the Da Nang University, but she already involved in the project. And then um, she will uh, soon register with the Sangha for her MPhil. So this study focused on the strep pneumonia and, and the to, um, with the objective of study the relevance and diversity of different strep pneumonia serotype um, in the children in Vietnam. And then um, also looking at the um, distribution of antimicrobial resistant gene as well as the virulent gene using the whole genome sequencing um, approach. So her project will aim for the uh, diverse, uh, better vaccine strategy and also uh, implement on the antimicrobial stewardship. With that, I would like to um, end my presentation here. Um, afternoon, everybody. Uh, on, a, on behalf of my group, I would like to agree you about microbiology team. Um, the main task of microbiology team is support on the group in a group uh, about the media preparation, also the culturing and identification of bacteria, also antimicrobial testing, including about um, uh, uh, several study of fungi cities and the trick pattern or respiratory pattern. Besides that, we also do some training uh, uh, for improving the microbiology skill set from, um, from the uh, hospital, from uh, for on the lab of the hospital uh, across Vietnam, including um, vet and human. Uh, Besides that, micro team also has some research topic to improve the patient outcome um, um, based on the CBO study, which study uh, on the capavenin resistant organism. Also, the diphtheria to develop the in house ELISA to detect the presence of um, uh, antibody against diphtheria toxin and also. Uh, brucellosis project to detect the pathogen that call uh, unknown fever and also uh, about TB or fungal sepsis in HIV patient. Um, if you are interested in down area in our group, uh, don't, don't hesitate to join our group. So that is the all member of our team. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Nhat Le Tham Hai Nhat. I'm, uh, I'm introducing myself. I'm a uh, I'm a third, currently I'm a postdoc in the biostatistics group. Uh, today, on behalf of my group, I would like to introduce um, some uh, detail about our group. So, um, what is biostatistics? So this is kind of the research to focus on the analyzing and interpret the data that we collect on the living organization, uh, uh, organism, sorry, uh, from uh, human to uh, micro, uh, 
um, organism like bacteria, etc. But at Cook Group, we focus mostly on human. Uh, our group have uh, currently we have uh, seven people. Uh, our group head is Ronald Cactus. Uh, is the pro associate professor at Oxford University, um, and there are three postdocs. Um, that's it, uh, Phung Khánh Lâm, uh, me, and uh, the other postdoc is uh, Yu Hong Đức. There are two current PhD students, uh, Nguyễn Lâm Phương and uh, Đồng Hồ Khánh Trần. He, Trần, he will present his PhD project as well. And we currently have uh, one female, uh, a very precious uh, female in our group. She is a research assistant. Uh, our background is very diverse. Um, there are three people have a mathematics background, two have one have a public health, and three are trained as a medical doctor. The role of the group is we have a main three, three main roles. So first uh, is to support. We provide in uh, uh, high quality advice and the support of statistical analysis for all the researcher and um, some of um, for their projects. And on the second is to build the capacity on the statistical methods uh, for the whole staff in agri-group by our um, scopes um, and seminar, like our course, our introduction to biostatistics. And sometimes we have a, we, uh, one for a year, we also have, uh, organize advanced statistics as well. Um, our research um, and the third role is to do the research. And main, the main team is to develop the novel statistical methods in the area that's relevant to the overall research. Uh, in particular, infectious disease. So, uh, along with that role, we so we have uh, the mission that first we continue to support and training the UPRO staff in terms of the statistical capacity and um, methods. And on the methodology, um, in order to work with the, the research uh, area, we focus on for the modeling and understanding the disease pathway like dengue, uh, cryptococcus meningitis. Cryptococcus meningitis is the disease associated with HIV infection or the people who are immunocompromised. Uh, Meso is very well-known infectious disease and very recently hot topic is the SARS-CoV-2. Um, the second, um, um, the, the second, uh, uh, I term is our, our mission is uh, to do to, to build the statistical model to improve diagnostic and prognosis like in the TB and the disease or in the dengue as well. And the third one, I, I think we very also very important is to develop the program that can help to, to automatically um, facilitate the cleaning and managing uh, and um, very simple analysis of the data. Um, and here it is very uh, brief of several paper uh, and the work we've done uh, in our group. And in the following, I will introduce um, Jin. He will present his uh, PT uh, projects. So please, Jin. Uh, hello, everyone. I could not see myself, so I don't know whether I looked good on the screen. So, okay. Um, I think you're all kind of tired for now, so I'll just go shortly, make it simple by telling you some story of myself. So, the first is who am I? Uh, as just introduced before, I was trained as a medical doctor, and I indeed worked in a medical insurance hospital number one for roughly eight months to one year before joining Okru as a research assistant in 2018 in the biostatistics group. Uh, it's been two years later until I joined. I managed to grab an opportunity to join uh, a collaboration, collaborative project between our unit and King's College, London. 
and get a PhD fellowship. So happy cat there, quite lucky. Um, well, you, so I, I saw some of your question before about whether we can apply for a PhD right after finishing our bachelor. And I think my story is a clear evidence for it's particularly possible. Me with um, like trained with a medical doctor naively jump to another field and then still managed to get a PhD. So why can't you? Next, I will tell you another story about my baby step in the future. So before it's the past, the past has to be gone. Um, so once upon a modern time, as you, I think, as you all hear about this one, um, in the, a former presentation uh, from the TB group about a bacterial con tuberculosis would mainly affect, invade our lung. In some very rare occasion, it can also go pass, go along with our blood and then go to travel to our brain. Although it's very rare, um, it's also very deadly. From the image on the left, or either can you understand the graph on the right or not, it is um, terrible for all this lesion appeared on the brain in the imaging, uh, MR imaging on the left hand side. So my project is mainly to tackle this one uh, rather than finding some new breakthrough in like new diagnostic tests or, or new technology, we kind of, we try to exploit the current uh, tool about and, and to, to explore or uh, to explore the fullest potential of the current tool but, and using the power of new technology like machine learning. And in this project, uh, we use the MR image together with our conventional biomarker that has been widely used for quite a long time to predict the outcome and to, then to improve the patient to reduce this devastating, of, uh, devastating trend of 50% of patients who met their end within one month. We want to reduce this number. Mm. The last but not least, uh, why I choose to be an, uh, a doctor of philosophy as an old group to learn this, to, to, to be a PhD student as old group. First, mainly because one of the big problem reason is because our, my, the project is here. But uh, that's another story. Um, Let's call, uh, there's uh, many other benefits as well, like the superior training and support with, uh, you can hardly find anywhere in, in Vietnam. Uh, we have, our training group have good management and high standard, but still respect your freedom and your self-development. And when joining our crew, not only in, a PhD project, you can have, um, you can meet a um, uh, culture, very UK culture, well blended with the Vietnam culture. So you don't have to worry about culture shock compared to when uh, going abroad yourself. And yes, you also, for those who want to make friends, this cannot be a better, you cannot find a better, uh, in, uh, environment where you can make new friends all over the world. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Mark Choisy. I'm the, the head of mathematical modeling. And I will present you um, the group today. And then Huyen is a PhD student that will speak to you about a PhD project as well. 
So mathematical modeling, uh, we were recently 15 people and now we're down to nine people, which means that if any one of you is interested in joining the group, there might be opportunities. So just um, contact us. So um, uh, at the moment, it's two researchers, one PhD student, Ian, and we got six uh, research assistants. Uh, in the group who work, um, we do um, applied mathematics and we also do um, health economics as the main two activities. And you can see also that uh, in terms of um, skills and expertise is quite diverse. It's included mathematics and economics, but not only, we uh, do a lot of computer programming. And also we also do uh, a bit of laboratory because we are also co-leading the zero surveillance system that I think Sonia presented uh, in Hanoi. Um, this is a list of the current project that we are working on at the moment. Um, so it includes uh, vaccine policies, which is a big uh, topic in Vietnam, uh, as well as antimicrobial resistance. And then um, also, um, I'm personally also very interested in um, the environmental and climatic driver of disease, in particular uh, dengue fever. Uh, obviously, um, since last year, we've all been working more or less um, intensively on COVID-19, uh, particularly together with some biostats, and that was just presented before. And in terms of health economics, there is also a number of uh, topics that um, are investigated, uh, essentially ICU, tuberculosis, and the treatment of hepatitis C that you and we present in more detail. Um, so here I'm showing a couple of slides of an example of things that we're doing. Uh, so one um, thing that we're investigating at the moment is how we can um, optimize the vaccination against measles. Um, so you know measles is one of those diseases that is uh, vaccinated by the government with a very uh, high vaccine coverage. But the problem of that disease is that it's very, very infectious. So if you don't uh, vaccinate high enough, uh, the disease can still persist. And the second problem is that people um, move in space, they travel, which can uh, also um, enhance the persistence of the disease at the level of the whole country. So here's an example of the kind of data we're working on. So on the left is the a contact structure data uh, matrix that tells you how people um, meet as a function of their age. In the middle, you've got the population density of Vietnam. And on the right, this is I'm showing um, some data from Facebook that illustrates um, the movement of people in the, in the country. And here is the recent uh, results that one of our students obtained recently that basically investigates uh, how much um, uh, Vac vaccination we should invest in the, um, in the cities versus a rural area, depending on the current vaccine coverage, and also depending on the number of new vaccine shots that you can uh, basically use. And now I'll hand over to Yuan, who's going to speak about her PhD project. So hi, my name is Huyen. I'm second year's PhD student, and I'm really happy to be here to say a little bit about my PhD project. Uh, so as you know, uh, there are many effective and worldwide intervention programs that can be used to improve the health population. For example, screening program, promotion program, or treatment program. If we have a lot of money, we can spend on every program that can, that can bring benefits for health population. However, it's as if in the reality context, we don't have much money like that. We have a very limited resources, especially in low and middle income content like Vietnam. Um, and it means that if you spend money on one program, or intervention, you don't have enough money to another program or intervention. So, which means that in among a different program or intervention, which program intervention we should choose, or 
it that the, our choice is a bad choice would be. So this situation uh, led to the decision maker, I mean the leader, feeling really difficulty to make a decision. For example, Medici of how feeling really confused to allocate their budgets on among different intervention of and programming to improve the health population. So the goal of my PhD project is to address this issue. It's been that I will try to find the answer to find out the answer to maximize the benefits from the intervention for hepatitis C patients from the limited research system. And with the support of the health science, and in here, we can call health chemical evaluation methods. And you can see the name of my topic at the top of the slide. The target population in here is a hepatitis C patient in Vietnam. And my PhD project will take four years. Um, so the last thing I would like to say, um, I guess so many young people um, take part into the seminar today want to know how to go to the PhD at Akku. So sorry, I don't talk about any criteria or master or any IL, so training department will help you. I just want to say that the two of the little, letter P would help you with our passion and passion. You know, like we could not like do the thing you don't like, right? So the passion is the first condition to help you to let, to go in. And the second thing, you know, to do the the this work, I do not work only one day or two day. I work for around one thousand forty hundred day. <laughs> so it could mean that it's quite a long time to do. So we need the patient to finish that. It's a key important. So remember, passion and patient. And thank you. Uh, my presentation is end now. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the molecular epidemiology group. Dr. Yui. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are joining. So I'll see the participants 128. That's quite a lot of people. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the open day today, even though this is online. Uh, I feel a little bit less interactive compared to the other years, but because of the COVID, we have to do what we can. So uh, my name is Dr. Yui Pham. So I'm the head of Molecular Epidemiology Group as OPRO. And today, I would like to present a little bit about our research activities and I hope you enjoy it. So a little bit background about myself. I graduated from the University of Natural Sciences about 18 years ago. I went straight to work for Oakwood at the research assistance. I, I studied my master and, and, and PhDs while working at, at Oakwood. So one thing that I, I, want to, I want to say is about Opera is, is provides a really, uh, a really good working environment for those of you who want to develop, uh, uh, develop your academic, academic uh, careers and become a, a, a research scientist. Uh, uh, tell me other example. So I think, I think Opera gave me a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, Freedom and a lot of support for me to develop uh, myself over the last 13 years. Even though I'm a group head now, I'm still, I'm still learning every day. So there's a lot of things that I'm learning every day uh, at the moment. So a, li a, little, bit, uh, a little bit of uh, the research areas that we are focused on. So our research group work a, little bit, uh, work a lot on uh, stroke resistance, practice infection, so our research, not only in Vietnam, but also we work with a lot of uh, research in institution uh, across Southeast and, and South Asia. So areas of, of our, our interest include uh, enteric fever, uh, severe bacteria, bacteria infection, for example, plasma infection, sepsis, uh, and also cold infections. I'm also very interested in understanding uh, the roles of commensal bacteria in the development of structural pathogens. 
and also understands uh, the, the impacts of uh, antimicrobial treatments on the uh, human gut microbiome. So our research covers a lot of uh, aspects, including uh, surveillance. So we run surveillance at the hospital-based level, at, at the community-based community level. We also run clinical trials. And also, we want to try to integrate our lab-based science into our um, surveillance and clinical trial, which allow us to better understand so how drug resistance, uh, how bacteria develop resistance, how they transfer, uh, how they transmit in different uh, human populations, and what's the impact of stroke resistance in, in, uh, infection on the patient's outcome. So we have a uh, we have a uh, uh, strong skills, uh, strong lab skills for those of you who want to develop uh, lab skills. So we have uh, we have skill in bound method, uh, focus on vector genomics, um, molecular uh, epidemiology, microbiology, molecular biology, etc. So over the last few years, we work with a lot of uh, uh, collaborators uh, within and, and also outside Vietnam. So we, we work with a lot of local hospitals, uh, local university and, and, and research institution. Uh, we work with uh, a lot of uh, also other research institutions in the UK and the US, um, Australia and, and across South Asia, South Asia, etc. So a little bit about our current study. So as you can see that we uh, we run in surveillances for vaccine infection um, in Vietnam, also in, in, in uh, with collaborator in Cambodia and Bangladesh. We also run uh, clinical trial for rotavirus vaccines uh, trial. We also run a, a stroke trial comparing azithromycin versus ciprofloxacin for better treatment of sickle losses and uh, dysentery. Uh, a, a couple of projects ongoing, but they are uh, hospital-based surveillance for uh, nosocomial infection and bloodstream infections at various hospitals in, in um, Ho Chi Minh City. We also want to expand our AMS surveillance across Vietnam as well. So we have a quite of a last group. Uh, we have two uh, principal investigators. We have two postdocs, one PhD student. We have a lot of numbers of research systems. We also have a, a, a very good teams of studies, uh, uh, study uh, management and implementations, including a lot of uh, study doctors, uh, coordinator. Um, one thing that I, I want to stress on is the fact that over the last 10 years, so I have worked with a lot of students from various local universities from uh, University of Natural Sciences, uh, University of Medicine and, and uh, Medical and, and Medicine and Pharmacy and, and, and various other uh, universities. So I'm willing to take uh, students uh, every year and for those of you who want to have some uh, experiences doing research. Uh, so very welcome. And I, was, uh, I have one PhD student who present um, his current space project and his experience being a PhD student at uh, Oak Group. À, xin chào tất cả các bạn, mình tên là Tuấn anh mình đang là nghiên cứu sinh tại Oak Group thì hiện tại do mình đang không có ở Việt Nam cho nên là mình đã ghi lại cái uh, video này để giới thiệu cho các bạn về mình cũng như là những cái cảm nhận của mình về chương trình học tại Oakru. À, mình nghĩ cách tốt nhất để giới thiệu về bản thân mình đó là cho các bạn xem một cái bức hình của mình vào thời điểm mà mình cảm thấy rất là vui vẻ đó là mình trong uh, thời gian một tuần đi học trường hè tại miền Nam của nước Pháp thì cái chàng trai mà mang kính màu cam này chính là mình ha. Thì mình muốn giới thiệu cho các bạn cái bức ảnh này bởi vì nó có liên hệ đối với cái quá trình mình học thạc sĩ và cũng như là Uh, có liên hệ đến cái quá trình tại sao mình chọn cái chương trình học tiến sĩ tại Oakru Thì về cái chương trình thạc sĩ của mình đó là một cái chương trình Erasmus mà mình sẽ dành 6 tháng tại Pháp, 6 tháng tại Tây Ban Nha và 6 tháng tại Ba Lan và cuối cùng là 6 tháng để làm internship tại một nước ở châu Âu Thì cái chương trình của mình chủ yếu là học về quan học và các ứng dụng của quan học trong sinh học, ví dụ như là Ờ, các phần tử phát huỳnh quang, protein phát huỳnh quang hay là các kinh hiển vi quang học cũng như là kinh hiển vi điện tử thì cái lý do mình chọn học chương trình tiến sĩ tại Oakru đó là bởi vì chương trình này phù hợp với lại những 
kiến thức cũng như background của mình đã từng có Như lúc nãy mình nói với các bạn thì trong quá trình mình học thạc sĩ thì mình có học rất nhiều về quan học và ứng dụng của quan học trong sinh học Thì một trong những cái khía cạnh chính của đề tài của mình đó chính là sử dụng kính hiển vi huỳnh quang để mà chụp hình vi khuẩn và sau đó xử lý các cái hình ảnh của vi khuẩn này bằng các cái phương pháp máy học sau đó kết hợp lại với các cái dữ liệu về hệ gen vi khuẩn để mà tìm hiểu về cái sự kháng kháng sinh trong các các cái cộng đồng vi khuẩn thường trú trong ruột của người khỏe mạnh cũng như người bị bệnh tiêu chảy um, thì như thì như các bạn thấy đó là mình học rất nhiều về quan học trong quá trình học master cho nên nó rất là phù hợp với lại cái đề tài này bên cạnh đó là việc mình phải sử dụng rất nhiều các kiến thức về trí tuệ nhân tạo cũng như là máy học mà mình đã được học trong quá trình mình học cử nhân toán tin tại trường đại học khoa học tự nhiên thì đó cũng là một cái điểm cộng rất là lớn của mình khi mà mình làm cái đề tài này thì cuối cùng thì uh, lý do đầu tiên đó là uh, đề tài này phù hợp với lại những gì mình đã từng học những gì mình đã từng biết và background của mình ha uh, cái lý do thứ hai mà mình chọn làm nghiên cứu sinh tại Oxford đó là bởi vì danh tiếng của đại học Oxford thì theo bản xếp hạng của The Time Higher Education năm nay thì trường đại học Oxford đứng chính xác tại vị trí đầu tiên trong bản xếp hạng này thì mình nghĩ là không có gì tuyệt vời hơn bằng việc là học tập và nghiên cứu tại Việt Nam được gần bên gia đình bạn bè và sau 4 năm học tập làm việc đó các bạn vẫn có thể có được cái bằng thạc tiến sĩ của đại học Oxford danh giá thì để mình nghĩ là cái phần trình bày của mình đến đây là hết nếu các bạn có bất kỳ thắc mắc nào về đề tài của mình hay những trải nghiệm của mình thì các bạn hoàn toàn có thể liên hệ mình hoặc là nếu các bạn muốn làm nghiên cứu sinh trong nhóm nghiên cứu của mình thì các bạn có thể liên hệ với anh Duy là nhóm trưởng của mình ha. Thank you very much from the Molecular Epidemiology Group. So moving on to our clinical trials unit and social sciences. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Celine, and uh, I'm going to share with you some information about the clinical trial research unit. Um, the, uh, 15 years ago, Oak Crew uh, felt a need to increase uh, the research capacity and enhance the quality of Oak clinical trial and research studies. So uh, we developed the uh, clinical trials, trial research unit. Um, over the past 10 years, um, the unit has um, has expanded uh, the human resources, but has also uh, developed and extended the oversight and has built the administrative support required uh, to conduct clinical trial. The uh, clinical trial research unit is located at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases and coordinates with a network of hospital-based satellite sites. And uh, the unit uh, includes Uh, three groups, the research governance, uh, the research operation, and also a social science team. Our governance team handles all the ethical and regulatory submission, and this has allowed us to uh, train experts who have uh, developed close relationship with uh, local authorities managing policies and uh, approvals. The governance team also has a group of uh, monitor. A qualified monitor who support for a study site answering the quality of the work. And we have a group of clinical research assistants who also support for centralized, centralized budget and also contract. The CTU has also a research operation group, which include a group of study coordinator. Uh, they support the sites and uh, the PIs to efficiently conduct the trials uh, and manage all the uh, operational aspects of a trial. We have also in the same group um, a team of pharmacists and they assist uh, the site and the team uh, to purchase, store and manage study drug. They also assist with the randomization processes and the dispensing of a drug. Last, we have a team for data management uh, and they, um, they work on uh, any, um, any aspect of study data from developing uh, data tool, softwares, uh, but also data entry processes, uh, whether it's on site or remotely. The, uh, then we have a group of social science, and for this, I will uh, leave a microphone to my colleague here. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is In from the social science team and now I would like to introduce a little bit about uh, my team. So the, the social research, sorry, I have to 
The social research team uh, was established in 2017 and has been increased in number for the past two years. We designed and implement social science studies to complement ongoing clinical research, as well as conduct a standalone research on a variety of health-related uh, topics within the hospital and the community. We um, focus on providing better understanding of the local context. And we are a very uh, multidisciplinary team uh, with a background in anthropology, uh, public health, and nursing. And within the team, we focus on training and improving capacity in social science and methods and approaches. Um, and let me give you a little bit of um, information about um, um, our, uh, what we have done so far. So, um, <clears throat> We started with some bioethics um, studies uh, in collaboration with the Global Health Bioethics Network. And then we have two major um, studies um, looking at the experiences with infectious disease. Uh, the first one is the habitatus related study um, working in two components. One is the one with, uh, one is um, the community based uh, participatory study uh, working with um, underserved um, populations and we also we are also forming a large network of um, social scientists working on hepatitis uh, hepat viral hepatitis and then we are also conducting um, a large scale um, study uh, on COVID-19 and we call it SPEAR. Um, we also have members working being part of the larger study in Okru, uh, for example, we have member uh, joining the research study, um, looking at the perception of stakeholders regarding human challenge models, vaccination, and health research more broadly. And we have a PhD student, which is me. Um, we are looking at, um, so in the PhD study, we are I'm looking at um, the antibiotic use in the community and also the context of antibiotic um, distribution and trade in Vietnam. Um, lastly, we have um, members um, in the innovation project um, in the hospital uh, in two components, um, the ethnographic um, study in the ICU and also the policy study, looking at um, the context and the landscape of integrating um, technologies into the ICU settings. So the IC and the social research team and also the CTU is a very dynamic team and we would love to welcome you in the future. And now I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Tan from the presentation. Hello everyone, um, I am Tan. I'm from public and uh, community engagement at Upro. Yeah. And um, allow me to introduce something about myself first. I, um, I, came, I, I first came to Upro for an interview uh, eight, eight years ago. And now I'm kind of by, uh, enjoying my work for sure. And um, I have an um, interest in uh, education and development. Um, I value um, sense of um, collaboration and exploration that um, give us uh, most, both um, opportunities and challenges to uh, working together to uh, um, share values and uh, achieve like, common goals. And I feel very much lucky working um, on an engagement program at Opro um, because it um, enables us, I mean, like, uh, I myself and um, my college at Okru um, to be able to interact with uh, diverse groups of uh, people coming from like both academic and non-academic backgrounds. And uh, even I'm not a scientist, but just me, um, I think engagement is a really interesting angle, uh, which you cannot find anywhere in Vietnam uh, except uh, Okru. So engagement, um, which we miss by an uh, interactive process uh, of uh, interactions uh, between like people and, and, and people. And, um, and um, so um, at Upgroup, um, we conduct our engagement in order to uh, try to support uh, our researchers and research uh, activities uh, in a way that uh, our research activities can be valued and um, by, uh, accepted by, uh, by the communities. And um, so let's in, in, 
So if if you have any like um, if you want to discuss with that about ways to build in the involvement or invite voices of like people in communities into research activities in order to make it more relevant, or you want to um, or you want to have ideas to make science uh, more accessible, uh, enjoyable for the public. So here we go, come to Ofru and uh, enjoy us at the public and community engagement. So um, what do we do with public and community engagement at Ofru? So let's imagine like, our engagement is like a human body and then it has like two hands. Um, the left hand is to, is like, uh, can function in those like to this to support research. Um, uh, it enables uh, the research communities to be involved with like our research and, and our researchers uh, and other relevant stakeholders in, in order to promote the mutual benefit. And um, a couple of uh, engagement activities that we have been conducting uh, to enrich research, uh, for example, um, we do engagement around vaccine uptake and acceptance, acceptance um, in vulnerable populations to um, try to understand the public perception and like attitude towards vaccine. Um, we also like, have a big like focus to build like long-term involvement with healthcare workers and like few staff in uh, rural health clinics um, like to carry out those like qualitative like studies of um, challenges that they face. And then we work together with them in a way of like co-designing those like interventions to support, support their work. And recently we uh, have developed um, research, a health research advisory group, uh, which allow us to uh, listen to um, the opinions and recommendations from the public uh, into our like, research activities here at ACRU. Uh, like, I mean, like the, the, the ongoing research activities and also like, the future research designs. So how about the other side? I mean, the um, uh, the right hand. Um, this is like working in a way to ensure that um, uh, research and science can have like can flow, can flourish and have full impact. And at the moment, we are focusing on doing engagement with uh, children and young people. We have developed a number of like, um, models of, for example, like science clubs and science debates, uh, which allow like school children and young people in the public to um, have regularly uh, discuss about science to, to increase their science like, skills and develop their scientific uh, attitude. Uh, in responding to the current situation of society, which means uh, the COVID restriction may limit the possibility of learning like in-person activities, activities for children to, uh, to learn about science. So we, in collaboration with Bayer, uh, are developing an Science Digital Hub uh, does work to uh, support Vietnamese students to uh, have a better, like, um, have, like, have more like, chances to uh, interact with science through online activities. And um, here at uh, the public and engagement team, we feel really like, lucky to, um, to have a group of uh, young science enthusiasts uh, who are our like, um, engagement youth ambassadors. So they join us to promote sense of, sense of public engagement and um, promote like, science literacy across different settings in, uh, in society. Uh, the, the ambassadors also receive like, our training, mentoring and financial support so that they are able to design their own engagement initiative uh, and care out in their um, communities. So, um, sorry, I forgot to, um, to move to the slide. So um, uh, what's happening next thing like um, we, we, we will continue to um, conduct our successful models uh, with like children and young people. Uh, but in addition, uh, in the, the coming years, uh, we will, are planning to build um, our focus on engagement around like, mental health, uh, climate and uh, health with like, young people across the country. And within these new areas, uh, as well as those like engagement activities like, that we have been like carrying on, we really look forward to having a chance to um, welcoming you and working together with you. So this is kind of like a basic introduction to uh, the overall of the like, public and community engagement at Upro. And now I'm um, like handing to uh, Ms. Tanha, who is our PhD student. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, everyone. Um, so if you are having the questions about if you are working in public engagement, whether you can do a PhD or not, then I can confidently say that yes, you can, as long as you have an interest and desire to do research. So my name is Ha, I'm a second, uh, I'm a third year student. I cannot believe that it goes that long. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student at UpCrew. And um, um, we know that there have been a lot of debates about the COVID-19 vaccine in these times, but actually the concerns about vaccine acceptance has been existing for a lot of times with the childhood vaccines that has been uh, invented and used for a long time. And so my PhD project will look at the um, perceptions and, and behaviors related to vaccination in ethnic minority communities in Dakla. So with the qualitative research methods, I hope to explore the mechanisms of how the health system, culture and society has shaped individuals' uh, behaviors and acceptance towards vaccine. And from my research findings, I hope to propose suggestions to the local health providers on how to improve their vaccine delivery. That's all. I will hand over to Lee, thank you. Okay, so you've heard from all of our research groups um, and apologies, we're running a little bit behind. Everyone was just so excited to talk to you that they um, talked about their lives far more at length. Um, so I hope you learned a lot. As always, we are answering question and answer in the chat box. So do continue to direct your questions there. Um, I just wanted to stop. I know that you've been listening for a long time. So I'm going to ask for your participation briefly. So you're going to see a poll launching on your screen. And I'm asking the question, which OCRU research group's work are you most interested in? And you can select more than one. Um, so this should be live now and you can, you can vote. It should be on your screen. I do apologize to some of the groups. I had to group some of you together because Zoom only allows me to pick 10 and we actually had 13 talks. So I have grouped together zoonoses and microbiology. I have grouped together um, clinical trials, social sciences and public engagement and biostats, mathematical modeling and health economics. So apologies for you guys. Um, you can blame Zoom, not me. And it's interesting to see, okay, so the voting is going fast and furious. I am not going to allow this to continue for much longer because we still have some more things to get through. So around 50 of you have voted. I'm going to end the poll now. Apologies to those who have not had a chance to vote yet. And I'm going to share results on the screen. So I think it's a narrow victory for biostatistics, mathematical modeling and health economics, followed by CTU, social sciences and public engagement. But lots of people interested in a number of our research groups. So thank you to all of you for taking part in that. Just a little bit of fun for us. And we're going to move on. I'm going to show a quick video now, which is a sneak tour into our labs. So sit comfortably and welcome to Oak Crew Labs.
Đây là hệ thống tủ ủ để nuôi mũi trong phòng thí nghiệm côn trùng học. Đây là quy trình cho mũi đốt trực tiếp ở tình nguyện viên. Và đây là hệ thống cho mũi hút máu qua màng. Đây là hình ảnh lấy mẫu nước bọt mũi, tuy nước bọt và chích mẫu nước bọt của mũi nhiễm cho mũi lành. Bên trong là phòng nhiễm nơi lưu giữ và thu mẫu mũi đã bị nhiễm virus dengue. Ngăn cách giữa hai phòng sạch và nhiễm là một lớp cửa và một tấm màn nhằm hạn chế tối đa nguy cơ mũi sống ra ngoài. Phòng được trang bị nhiều cái thiết bị ly tâm lạnh Bên cạnh những cái thiết bị ly tâm đó còn có những cái thiết bị sấy khô DNA theo phương pháp phút chân không Ngoài ra trong phòng còn có thiết bị siêu ly tâm với những cái hệ thống ly tâm cũng như là sấy chân khô cho phép phòng sinh học phân tử có thể là tách chiết axit nucleic cũng như là đo nồng độ axit nucleic bằng cái hệ thống như là nanoprop, qubit hay là bicorin À, bên cạnh đó thì trong phòng còn có một cái thiết bị của hãng Azulin cho phép đo à, cái kích thước của axit nucleic thì việc đo kích thước axit nucleic thì đóng vai trò rất là quan trọng trong việc giải mã trình tự gen thế hệ mới trong phòng còn có nhiều cái thiết bị à, PCR đây là những thiết bị à, không thể thiếu trong phòng thí nghiệm sinh học phân tử và hạt tâm của phòng thí nghiệm sinh học phân tử là những cái hệ thống giải mã trình tự thế hệ thứ nhất thế hệ thứ hai đó là hệ thống Maxic Illumina và thế hệ thứ ba là Oxford Nanobore thì với những cái hệ thống giải mã trình tự như vậy cho phép phòng thí nghiệm sinh học phân tử có thể là giải mã đồng thời nhiều bộ gen virus và vi khuẩn thì bộ gen virus à, được giải mã gần đây nhất đó là à, sars cov hai đang gây đại dịch toàn cầu. Our Biosafety Level 3 lab has been approved by Oxford University as well as Ministry of Health Vietnam. This is the entrance for the lab. Here there is facility to change your dress and wear the protective clothing. And these are the labs and we have biosafety cabinet and other instruments to work with the inside the lab and the air in the all the lab is sucked out through the ducts and it is filter sterilized so that no pathogen can escape outside and also whole facility can be monitored by camera system so that we can monitor what all the activity that is taking place inside from outside the negative pressure panel uh, is shown here for each uh, separate sections of the lab
khi làm việc ở các lớp 25 chúng ta sẽ có những cái quy định 25A là phòng áo lấp trắng, 25B là sử dụng áo mắt màu xanh. Các hệ thống máy không thường bao giờ là máy chất thiết chịu động của tốt giúp để tách chiếc các mẫu bệnh phẩm ra các sản phẩm là RNA hoặc là DNA. Ngoài ra phòng còn được trang bị để các tủ làm việc riêng bị các tủ ăn bằng sinh học cấp 2. 115A là phòng để chuẩn bị Master Mix chạy BCA pha Primer Brot Ngoài ra còn có các tủ đông để chứa các quá chất được chiên theo cách nhóm Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you for sticking around. Um, we just have a couple of last talks from some current um, students and also one of our graduates. So can I ask Dr. Tien, would you like to go first? Okay. Xin chào mọi người. Mình quyết định là sẽ nói tiếp việc được người dân chia sẻ những cái suy nghĩ của mình hơn. À, hôm nay thì mình rất là vui, mình tin tiên hôm nay mình rất là vui được ở đây để chia sẻ những cái trạm nghiệm rất là tốt đẹp của mình trong suốt 4 năm PhD của mình ở Ốc Lu từ năm 2010 cho đến năm 2014 thì uh, về mặt background thì mình là tốt nghiệp ở trường đại học khoa học tự nhiên chuyên ngành về công nghệ sinh học năm 2007 thì mình có cơ hội được làm việc là với vị trí là research assistant ở um, Okru. Sau thì cái môi trường về cái môi trường nghiên cứu lâm sàng ở đây đã uh, mình cảm thấy rất là thích thú. Cho nên là năm 2010 thì mình apply một cái chương trình PhD ở Okru và được chấp nhận. Mình làm việc ở nhóm đen kia đen kia dưới sự uh, hướng dẫn của uh, professor uh, Bridget Quill. Um, thì uh, thật ra là lúc đầu mình làm PhD ở đây thì mình rất là lo lắng tại vì là uh, cái chuyên ngành của mình là công nghệ sinh học nó nghiêng về phía kỹ thuật mình ít biết về lâm sàng cũng như những cái nghiên cứu lâm sàng thì nhưng mà ví dụ như các bạn nào mà có cái background giống mình thì cũng đừng có lo lắng bởi vì vào đây thì các bạn sẽ được uh, training này các bạn sẽ được hỗ được sự hỗ trợ rất nhiều từ phía Uh, supervisor cũng như các đồng nghiệp xung quanh uh, <cười> và cái 4 năm mà làm PhD ở học uh, luôn thì là những cái trải nghiệm rất là thú vị được học nhiều và uh, các bạn sẽ có giống như mình thì có cảm giác luôn luôn là học luôn giống như là ngôi nhà thứ hai của mình vậy thì năm 2014 mình xong PhD mình có thêm một năm làm workshop ở uh, sau đó vì uh, lý do cá nhân thì sau đó mình uh, làm mình không có làm tiếp tục làm nghiên cứu nữa mà mình ra ngoài để, uh, làm việc ở tập đoàn y khoa hoàng mỹ hiện tại thì mình vẫn làm ở tập đoàn y khoa hoàng mỹ với cái vị trí là uh, quản lý chất lượng uhm, thì uh, với những cái thật ra là ban đầu thì cái uh, cái công việc mà quản lý chất lượng xét nghiệm đó, nó khá là À, mới bởi vì mặc dù là có nhiều kinh nghiệm làm việc trong phòng lab nhưng mà về cái gọi là xét nghiệm lâm sàng á, nó khá là có nhiều cái mới so với mình tuy nhiên là với những cái kiến thức cũng như những cái gọi là um, <cười> kỹ năng mà mình được học ở học ru thì đã giúp mình vượt qua tất cả và làm tốt cái công việc của mình à, vì vậy nếu mà à, các bạn nếu mà có Uh, cơ hội uh, với là có cái đam mê làm nghiên cứu thì học ru là một cái môi trường nghiên cứu um, mình phải nói là mang tầm cỡ quốc tế và mọi người ở đây rất là thân thiện rất là hỗ trợ uh, sẽ có các bạn sẽ có cái uh, gọi là cái thời gian làm việc tốt đẹp ở đây <cười> cảm ơn mọi người So hi everyone, um, 
we just hear uh, about the very joyful experience from uh, Dr. Dean. And now uh, I will like uh, continue uh, to share my experience uh, uh, in Okru with you guys. And first, I'm, um, my name is Jan and I'm the children doctors. Uh, and today it's my pleasure to be here to share with you about uh, my academic journeys. And um, firstly, I would like to introduce a little bit of myself. Um, so I uh, graduated from Phạm Ngọc Thạch University of Medicine in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And I got clinical trainings at the Children One Hospital. And also I practiced clinically at the City Children's Hospital. And I have obtained the level one subspecialty in pediatrics uh, before going to the UK to study Master of Public Health at the University of Edinburgh. So at this point, you might wonder why I switched my career path to do research. Uh, the reason is that I want to improve the uh, management of dengue in children through research. Um, during the time I work clinically, um, I've, I have seen many and many children with dengue uh, every year, and uh, most of them uh, are my and also uh, can recover um, very well after a few days of hospitalization. But a uh, few of them are having very severe conditions and die eventually, unfortunately. And uh, at that time, I, um, I realized that there are so many things that we are going to know about this disease. And I think that if we understand more about the mechanism as well as the pathophysiology of this disease, it can have to uh, serve many lives of Vietnamese population. So uh, that's why uh, at that time, I decided to apply for the Children Scholarship to study uh, about medical research in the UK. So after graduation, I came back to Vietnam and I um, started working um, at a dengue research group at Okru. So here I uh, fortunately can uh, work, uh, continue practice my medicine as well as uh, doing uh, medical, uh, clinical research about dengue, which is my interest. So go back a little bit about how did I know about Okru. So um, actually I have first hear about Okru about six or uh, five years ago. I was a medical student um, studying infectious diseases at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases. So at that time, um, I, um, when I first hear about Okru, I really uh, curious about the activity of Okru. That's, what, that's why I um, obtained um, quite a few activities uh, organized by Okru, like some cafes. Or also, I joined the uh, open day uh, like you are doing now. And um, so last one, I want to say that why I decided to uh, study PhD at Okru, um, because while I'm working here at Okru, I found that there's a lot of um, diverse um, training programs uh, offered by the training team here, like scientific uh, writings, uh, epidemiology, uh, or statistics. And also, especially Okru also offer international registered PhD fellowships in collaboration with their partners uh, in national as well as international hospital and universities. And so because my, I want to uh, uh, become a, an um, academic physician, that's why I um, start applying to study um, PhD uh, in clinical medicines at the University of Oxford. And this program will be uh, organized in collaboration with uh, our crew PhD program here. Uh, so it can make sure that while doing uh, my clinical projects here in Vietnam, I still able to uh, um, have a qualified trainings as well as uh, support uh, for my career development. And actually I just start my PhD program this year and I'm really excited to share with you uh, the results as it going further. So that's the end of my presentation. And if you're interested in or uh, have any questions about our PhD program, you can connect with me by Twitter or LinkedIn. Thanks for hearing. That's all of me. Thank you, Dr. Chan. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information and we've had a lot of talks from different people. Um, our chat box is still open. I know it's been really, really busy. Um, I'm just going to flick through and see if there's any new questions. 
Um, I see that Ian has already answered the person who asked, will the potential projects be listed later in the OCRI website or should it should we refer to the university page? Actually, we advertise our projects on the Oxford University page. So you should keep your eye on that page on the Nuffield Department of Medicine site around September or October to see our new projects. Now, I know that we're already running a little late. Um, what I would suggest is that if any of you have any further questions, please direct them to our training team by email and we will get back to you. Also, do remember to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter, so you will be able to find Oak Crew on both of these social media channels. And if you have taken any interest in screenshots or you have anything you want to say about our Open Day, we ask that you use the hashtag Oak Crew Open Day. Okay. And finally, um, thank you for joining us today. We would love to hear your feedback. Please scan this QR code using your iPhone or your Android device, and you should be able to find our online survey. So it would be great if you could leave some feedback for us. I appreciate that having a digital open day is not the same as seeing you all face to face. We do apologize for that and hope to move back to face-to-face -face open days in the future. Um, but as far as our COVID restrictions will allow, we hope that you enjoyed the digital version of our open day. We have recorded this, so we will be able to share this very soon. So do keep an eye on our social media channels where we will be sharing the recording with you. Um, as I said again, for any further information, do contact us at training at ocru.org. Ian, can you put the email address in the chat box again, just to remind everyone? Otherwise, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, from all of our scientists who joined us today, and thank you for your attention. Okay, we will be sticking around a little longer. Um, I will be turning the video and the microphone off, but please do pop some questions in the chat box if you would like to ask us anything. And thank you again for your attention. Cheers, everyone. Bye from everyone at Oak Crew. Have a great day.